Peace and blessings. Welcome to Brooklyn Crochet Presents Make and Take Crochet. I'm your host, Yvonne Sloan Cherry, and today we'll be joined by Phyllis Graham Anderson of Phyllis's Original Crochet Corner and Claudette Brady of Slip Stitch Needle Craft. Phyllis takes granny squares and triangles and she puts them together to make alphabets and then she creates blankets and baby clothes. Claudette, the owner of Slip Stitch Needle Craft, she sells hand dyed yarn and other crochet products, yarns, notions, and things that you need for knitting. And she'll be talking to us today about color work. Welcome, Phyllis. Hi, Vaughn. How are you? Good. I'm so glad that you can make it today. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's been a pleasure um, working up all these designs and um, working with you um, <laughs> and, um, you know, crocheting for a cause. Yes. Such a wonderful experience. Yes, yes, yes. Because Phyllis and I, we actually, we grew up together. Yes. We've known each other like all our lives. Our parents were friends. So I was actually surprised to see that Phyllis was still crocheting because we all crocheted as kids. And I started a crochet circle at the library, at Walt Whitman Library in Fort Greene Projects there. We call it the Brooklyn Crochet Connection. And Phyllis started coming out. So I see her with her little granny square stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. We need to be selling that as a pattern. So tell us about the design process. Well, I started out making um, granny squares and triangles. And that one day I decided I wanted to make a letter. I had a student that was on my track team. She was going off to college. Mm -hmm. First one to get a scholarship. Nice. And going off to the University of Texas. So I got burnt orange and white. And I made this really large B, because her name was Barbara. <laughs> and um, after I did that, I started going through this process of, well, maybe I can formulate another letter. Mm -hmm. So I continued to work on uh, formulating these letters until I got the entire alphabet done. Wow. So it really is uh, an original thought process mm -hmm. and and it's it's um, really gratifying when I make a project for someone and they actually see their letters or their initials come to light. Wow. How long have you been crocheting for? I've been crocheting since I was 13. My mother decided to teach me and my four sisters how to crochet. What was your first project you did? I think I did a scarf. scarf? Everyone does a scarf first. Right. It's a straight, <laughs> straight arrow, uh -huh. you know, um, uh -huh. activity, and it's very easy to do. Okay. Did your, your mom crochets too? My mom crocheted, and she used to do handkerchiefs, the ends of the handkerchiefs, doilies, um, tablecloths. And she worked with a really tiny needle, way oh, smaller than this one. Those little steel hooks, yes, right? Yes, those really the tiny year. ones. <laughs> so when the bigger needles came out and became fashionable, mm -hmm. she said, hey, I know how to do that. And we were like, what, what, what? And she um, went to the store, got us all needles, and began to teach us. That's so nice. That's so nice. Yes. So, any of your sisters crochet or your brothers? Everybody, cro all of my sisters crochet. I have four sisters, uh -huh. they all crochet. Oh, that's good. Yes, we actually did a major project um, out of squares and triangles one year. Mm -hmm. We made a queen size blanket, and everybody had to make squares and triangles to contribute to the pro project. Oh, that was nice. What was that for your dad? No, actually, it was for my brother and his wife. We wanted to make them, oh, that is so nice. you know, a big Christmas present, and it turned out to be, you know, a good project for us, although we didn't crochet exactly the same, because everyone's hand is different. Right. It still came out to be a beautiful blanket when it was done. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's nice. Yes. I'm going to ask my brothers and sisters if they want to make something for me and my husband. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be great. That would be great. That would be great. So today I have... One of, the, one of my projects that I'm actually working on. And this is a blanket with a little girl's initials, oh, E-R-B. So nice. Just hold it up and so everybody can see that. It's really, really 
you know, um, a keepsake. Mm -hmm. You know, she can have it for her entire life because right now she's a baby. But as they get bigger, they can use it. Wow. Their TV blanket, their car blanket, you know, uh -huh. their travel blanket, right, their right. beach blanket. Right. Whatever the occasion occur, uh, calls for, mm -hmm. they can use the blanket for. This is really nice. I like this yellow, too. Yeah, and the and way you combinated it, you know? Yeah. It's like lemon heads. <laughs> Don't mind me. Everything is candy. candy. <laughs> Everything is a candy or a cake for me, right? Yes. I so just this, like snacks. These are fun projects to do because I, I always like to see, you know, the finished product. Mm -hmm. But this will have a row of squares at the top and a row of squares at the bottom. Oh, To okay. be added on to make it oh. a bit larger. Okay. So. Cool. Yes. That's really yes. nice. So besides the blankets, you do the sweaters, right? I do sweaters out of squares. Uh -huh. Yes, I do. And I do, um, I created a mohawk hat out of squares, mm -hmm. which, you know, um, actually went over well because it's an original design right. and um, it's something catchy that little boys would like. Right. I also do... Um, Wait, you did the mohawk out of squares? The mohawk hat out of squares. Oh, wow. <laughs> Granny squares. Okay. It was, a, it was a, you know, a project. One of my sisters um, wanted me to make a hat and a, 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 hat and a, a scarf set, mm -hmm. but she said, make a different hat. So I came up with a mohawk hat. I went to sleep, mm -hmm. woke up and said, oh, I know what kind of hat I'm going to make. Design a mohawk hat. See, that's the beauty of being creative. Sometimes while you're working on something, it's like, I can't remember, I, I can't figure this out. Then you'll fall asleep and you'll wake up and like, it happens. It happens. You yes. just, it just comes to you. you yes. Just, you just get it, you know? Yes. And that's why I like art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where can people find your patterns? Where can they purchase? Okay, so um, as you announced, I have Phyllis's Original Crochet Corner on Facebook mm -hmm. and they can see a lot of my work and they can actually contact me there, place orders. But with your help and guidance, I was able to upload my patterns, my alphabet, on my Etsy site. Right. So it's uh, Stitch by PGA on Etsy. Cool. So now you can actually go get a digital download of the whole we alphabet. have the whole alphabet up? The whole alphabet. All oh, right. How about that? You can that? go get the whole <laughs> alphabet up, all right? Yes. All 26 letters. Yes. Cool. Yes, yes. Cool. And there's a few designs up there. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone wants to place a special order, they will they can actually contact me on Etsy as well. And, you know, we can be in, in touch. So when you say you have a few designs, is that like, if I go on your site and I see a sweater, I can just order that sweater that I see right now you and can, get it? You can place an order. Oh, okay. So you don't have anything that's just ready to go. The Everything alphabet is, is ready to go and okay. digital download. Okay. All but right. any special designs that are up there, if someone wanted to order that, mm -hmm. they can actually place an order. How long does it take for an order to come through? Well, if they wanted to get a letter, of course, that's instantaneous because it's a digital download. But if they wanted to place an order for a blanket or a sweater set or something else special that I've done, mm -hmm. they can actually place the order and it can be done in in three weeks or less. Wow. Okay. Yes. That's yes. good. That's good timing. Yes, especially with the holidays coming, you know. Exactly. You never know who may want to place a special order for a family member. Uh-huh. You get, you get a lot of holiday orders, I can imagine, and baby showers and... All the time. Wow. Because people are now looking for original, original um, items to purchase well, for... Um, friends and family. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on our TV show today. Well, thank you so much for having me, Yvonne. It has been a pleasure. <laughs> Welcome back. And now we're joined with Claudette Grady, owner of Slip Stitch Needle Craft. Hi. Hey. Hey. Thank you for having me back. Thank you for How being here. How you doing? There. I'm good. I'm good. Love your top. That is so cute. Thank you. I love yours too. Thank you. What's that out of? It's a uh, it's 
some textbook for me that yarn. I made this about eight years ago with a Lowen, a cotton from Lowen brand. Oh, nice, nice. And what stitch is that? Oh my God! It's like a stars or it's a little flower stitch. Don't ask me to uh, off the top of my head. This mm -hmm. is like an eight-year-old top. So oh wow! It yeah. still looks good. Thank eight you. years, wow. Make it by hand. Wash it by hand. I know that's right. That's what mine's is. I can throw this in the washing machine. I got this yarn from your store. Yes, you did. <laughs> that is the uh, Ella Ray Phoenix DK print. Yeah, cool. Wow. I just figured out, throw this one. I'm trying to bring sexy back. Let me show you the back of it. Oh. Like that? I love that. And very modest in the front, sexy in the back. Yes, thank you. So what do you got here with you today? Well, today I'm going to talk about color work. Um, and this is some, cro some different examples of crochet color work. But I'm going to talk specifically about mosaic crochet today. Oh. So there are different types of co um, color work. There is um, mosaic. There is, there is um, tapestry. Um, and, and a lot of those color works, you work with two colors or three colors at the same time, mm -hmm. or some with bobbins. For the beginner, the easiest form of color work is mosaic, because okay. you're working with several colors, but only one color at a time. Okay. So you look at something, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of things. So like this looks very intricate, but this is just basic double crochets, and you're working one color at a time. So you're not carrying the yarn, you're working the gray, then you work the off-white or the base here. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to working the next row with the gray. Oh, wow. And then this afghan is a similar process. With this, again, you're working just one color at a time. And when it all comes together, you get this very complex looking color work. But this is just all double crochet and single crochet. And black, then you work white, black, and you work white. Yeah, but I like it, it in but it's how you yeah. work those stitches that yeah. um, you get that 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 pattern or whatever pattern you want to create. Because mm -hmm. you can you can do multiple patterns on this. Or so now this is you you carry the yarn un oh the, it's you're working over. Okay. You're okay. working over previous stitches. Cool. Now so this is and then there. This is pretty much known as mosaic crochet. The top of this is actually inter interwoven crochet or interlocking crochet, but some people also call it um, mosaic crochet. And this one I worked a little bit different um, because I wanted a reversible fabric. Mm -hmm. So again, with this, I'm working one row of white, one row of black, but I wanted something different on the back. Wow, so look at that. Oh, I didn't weave in an end. You didn't see that. <laughs> um, so I wanted, I, I wanted a different look. So I wanted to be able to, 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 to um, sort of turn it over. This is so pretty. Wow, that's the, what kind of yarn is this? Yarn feels nice too. It's 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 an acrylic yarn. Oh really? It is an acrylic. Um, wow. For things like throws like or end. house products, I I, I use acrylic because mm. you know some you know one of my little um, nieces or nephews will right. come over and spill something horrible on here while they're cuddling on the television, mm -hmm. and that way I could just throw it in the washing machine and throw it in the dryer. Cool. That's really yeah. nice. So this is similar to the. The, the first one you saw, uh -huh. just the pattern's changed a little bit. It's really nice. It looks like, like a towel. It, these are from tile patterns, actually. I was in Cuba uh, about two years ago, and in Cuba and Havana, most of the buildings are from the 1800s, and they still have the original tiles. Wow. So I, I'm walking around going like this, taking pictures of the floor. Everybody's going like, well, I did both because they have um, lovely um, tile work on the ceilings as well. But I, was, I took pictures of a lot of tiles. And then the other thing that I'm completely fascinating with now is wrought iron work. And so oh, I, I, I could I, tell I, on yeah, about that. So I live in bed style, and uh -huh. you know we have, again, old houses. Because right. uh, those are like buildings. indinker symbols. Yeah. 
so you, y you see a lot of really interesting iron work, and one of the things I'm trying to do is like interpret that in either crochet or knitting. Well, I have a whole host of pictures mm -hmm. that I've been taking mm -hmm. of the wrought iron fences for years, like especially like in Park Slope area, because mm -hmm. a lot of places they, they've torn down mm -hmm. a lot of the wrought iron mm -hmm. fences, but that fence work is, is yeah. really nice. My husband does that black yeah. iron yeah. Um, welding Th stuff. There's, a, there's one house that has... Um, it is, a, uh, and I, I won't give the address because it means we'll run to this house. <laughs> um, but it's it's the only house that we've found through any of the historic districts in New York City that has this really unique iron um, iron fence, and I've, I've I've been working at getting that fence. I wonder if I even have a picture of it because soon as I see it, I take a picture. I'll, I'll tell you where it is. After okay, it, off air. Yeah, because <laughs> even like the rug reminds me of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so, so funny that you were thinking about. That and, and so was I. Great minds. Okay. <laughs> so I'll put together my what I'm crochet piece and you put together yours. Or we'll have a walking tour of um, his, uh, historic buildings and, and crochet installation. Right, because you also do the historical preservation yep. mm -hmm. type stuff mm -hmm. too, right? Yep. I tell yep. you, Claudette. That That's is my second like, love. Yes. Yes. You need something you want to know about it? Ask <laughs> Claudette. She can tell you the preservation of it. So, you have this, you have this. And, and, and we, we, we have some other shots that you'll, you'll show later on. Because oh. I can drag all my samples here on the subway today. Oh, okay. But I really like this piece yeah. that you have well, back this, here yeah, now. This, this one actually is not uh, mosaic. This is, is a fair isle crochet where I mm -hmm. am stranding the yarn. I'm, uh -huh. I'm carrying the, the um, both yarns right, at the same time. Right, and that's time. what you call intarsia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this one, um, this one, I am, how did I work this one? This one That's overlay. This one, I'm overlaying it, yeah. <laughs> I'm overlaying it with a, a, a front post stitch. Mm -hmm. and, and this is also, this goes back to the, um, the mosaic. Right. Where I'm working um, just one color at a time. Those are really nice pieces. And I would have never thought to do this because this bowl is, this yarn here, yeah. it's like, that's a good well, way to bring yeah, it back. I had a, I had, um, a bunch of boucle yarn, mm -hmm. and I was just like, what can, I, I just got kind of got, there was a time when boucle was like the hottest thing, and, right. and you know, you go out and you, you, you overload on your shopping on a certain right. thing, and then, right. and I was, and, and actually what these hats are for was, I'm making hats for, um, for the homeless, for the, for the, um, for the fall. Oh, okay. So, what I do is I keep my leftover yarn. Mm -hmm. So you don't always have enough to make a project. Right. So what I'll do is I'll lay them out and I'll determine which ones I like together. And so that's also my inspiration for color work. It's like, okay, I have, you know, a half a skein of this, a half a skein of that. How am I going to combine those two mm -hmm. to make something attractive? So the, um, the, the actually making hats and scarves for, for, for the homeless really kind of gets my creative juices working because mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm using um, my leftover over yarn to do that. And I think wha what happens is that, you know, I'm creating something that's really pretty for somebody who is, I is homeless. And I think that psychologically mm -hmm. um, it will make them, f you know, I can make a regular hat, just a right. plain hat. But if I make something really pretty, I think that will make that person feel even and that's better. that's nice because those colors, are, it almost looks like stained glass yeah. with the mm -hmm. muted colors like that. So that's really nice. And your, your homeless project is through what organization? So the, this one I'm working with, it's um, Kings County Fiber Fest. I don't know if you're going to be on air f in time for this, but it's actually next, it's, th it's this weekend. So w I'm doing my first batch for them, and then my church, mm -hmm. um, we do a thing for people in shelters. Mm -hmm. So um, we do Thanksgiving dinner, and we hand out um, sort of a bag with um, usually, if we, if we can get enough, a hat and a scarf, a toothbrush, uh, shaving stuff, mm -hmm. so, you know, toiletries. Nice, nice. So, um, so after I finish this, I start again now on my, um, on or sometimes we have like a family that we'll do, like some, uh -huh. we'll do like that for, for a family in a shelter. Oh, okay. That's nice. That's nice. Cool. We do a um at Brooklyn Crochet Connection, right, Phyllis? We do every year. We do a um some sort of charity and whatnot. So this year, Ruth contacted 
the Brooklyn Hospital and Brookdale Hospital. Mm -hmm. So we'll be crocheting for the neonatal yep. clinic and whatnot. Ooh, good. I have a whole bunch of family hats that are. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. And we also have a project with Victoria and Liz, and they're with the um, Bridge Street. They're going to be doing um, cancer. Right. We're going to be doing a cancer. This is Bridge Street Development Corp. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we're going to be crocheting for um, breast cancer, mm -hmm. and they're going to be having um, a project coming up soon, too. But I'll put that information on the site. So uh, just a, excuse my little hiccup, uh, just a little thing here now. So Bridge Street, Bridge Street Develop, support came out of Bridge Street Church. Bridge Street's like the oldest African-American church in Brooklyn. Now, that's some history for you, <laughs> okay, <laughs> tying that all up into the crocheting <laughs> in the African diaspora and the black community. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's good to know. All righty. So thank you so much for coming on our show today. Thank you for having me. All righty. Okay. <laughs> hey, crochet has been used in ancient cultures for centuries. When you look at some of the mosaics and tiles on the walls of the temples and chapels, you'll see that they look just like granny squares or this mosaic piece right here. This is really nice. So thank you for joining us and come back again real soon.